Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of In The Mix Mondays with your favorite virtual happy hour friends. I'm financial advisor Al Moore and my good friend, attorney Lee Miller. Please say what's up. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen, we're making In The Mix Mondays history today. We actually have our first very, very special guest. Extremely excited to have her and collaborate with her. Um, she's going to be bringing you guys up to speed in the mix with some things in regards to the mortgage and real estate industry. Uh, Miss Tina Adams. Tina, say hello. Hello, hello, everyone. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So glad to have you. So, um, as always, uh, in, this, in the vein of being in the mix, uh, we'll get around to telling you guys what we have. And actually, Lee, this is another In The Mix Monday um, history. This is the first time I'm not actually drinking out of a, um, a mason jar. And I actually don't like it. Like, I had to get, like, an actual glass. <laughs> only because glass? I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say who, but somebody who, you know, is in charge of, like, dishware and stuff <laughs> broke my mason jar. Oh, and so, wow. But in every tragedy, in every tragedy, there's opportunity. Absolutely. You know, I was thinking, I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to buy a new mason jar, and I want it to be specific towards in the mix Monday. So. Or a cognac glass. I mean, you don't have to buy another mason jar. And so, with that being said, I found a little company that um, I talked with, and they can, like, get us our own, like, printed mason jars and glasses. So soon, very soon, people. We will have In The Mix Mondays, mason jars and cognac glasses, and at some point that will be available for purchase. So the next time, maybe not the next time, but at some time when you're watching In The Mix Mondays, it's getting ready to come on, you can grab your In The Mix Monday cognac glass or mason jar and, and, and join us and be united in the In The Mix family. So, um, but at any, um, in any event, in my actual mix today, um, I just, I just wanted to keep it light. I didn't want it to do too, too much. So I actually got a, a gift, some champagne gifted to me. Um, and I decided to add a little bit of, um, of Florida's goodness, um, some orange juice to it. And so, um, we are having, um, been blessed by the mimosa ministry today. Um, what you got, what you got, Lee? All right, so today uh, is Juneteenth, so I'm going hard. So uh, we got Termana Tequila. Uh, this is endorsed by Dwayne The Rock. And so I'm just doing this straight up with some lime juice. Uh, just going to do a couple shots, though, not not too hard. We got a lot of work to get done. But uh, So we're yeah. doing tequila, celebrating Juneteenth. So that's what we're doing over here. That's what's in my mix. Ms. Adams, what's your mix? Well, you know what? Y'all didn't give me a, t a chance to go grab my glass of wine, so I'm just going to have that afterwards. Okay. <laughs> but it would be a glass of wine. Fruity, fruity glass of wine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, um, without further ado, we're just going to kind of hop into some things, um, get into this financial segment. Um, <clears throat> as we kind of seen in the last two weeks, there was some – uh, market pullback, but expected volatility. Um, kind of the big thing still here now is uh, the reopenings. And so you'll kind of see those things having an effect on, on the market. Um, there is some, some, some optimism. You know, you guys always like to leave with optimism because like I said, there's, um, you're inundated with, with pessimistic and, and bad news. So, I mean, Uncle Al just likes to touch on some things to be optimistic about. Um, so one thing, uh, we got some consumer reports back uh, for the month of May. And Brother Lee. Okay. Guess what consumers did in the month of May? Do you think they spent they more do? or do you think they spent less? I think they spent more because of the pandemic. How much, if you had to guess a percentage of how much spending was up, what would you say? Uh... 44%. That is, that, is, that is very optimistic. 
and I appreciate that optimism. But let's 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 pump our brakes for a second. It was up 17%, which is still good. Not quite 44. 44 would have thrown us into a whole yeah, other 14, category. 14. 14. No, 14. 14. 14. Consumer okay. spending for the month of May was up 17%, <laughs> which is which gives a lot of the guys on Wall Street um, pause to think that the kind of the 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 big the big shock is over. Um, quarantine seems to have had an effect of people like as soon as they could get out of the house, they started to go and spend money. Um, and even still like online retail was still a thing too. So I mean whenever whenever you're coming out of a situation where you have high unemployment and um, things have kind of been stagnant, um, you like to see con consumer confidence and consumer spending is is always a, a good thing for the economy at whole because consumers are spending money. Companies have profits, presume they should have profits, or they're making some money back and so that they can keep jobs and not let people off. And so that keeps us going um, round and round. Um, another thing, uh, in speaking of unemployment, last week capped off the 11th straight week of declining jobless claims, uh, which is good news. Um, that means that the amount of people filing claims for unemployment has been decreasing um, for the last 11 weeks straight. There's still quite a few people um, unemployed um, or who have been furloughed, whether it be temporary or permanent. But the fact that we haven't seen an increase is good. Um, so people getting back to work, people spending money. And, uh, and also the, the Fed, when you guys hear people talk about the Fed, it's just the Federal Reserve or the government coming in and they're buying up a lot of uh, corporate bonds so that companies can have money, um, so they don't have to lay people off. So um, there are a lot of things going on behind the scenes where they're really trying to like keep the market up and keep it good. Um, the, the, the government is trying to do their part to help us get out of this um, the mess of the pandemic. And whether it be political or not, they understand the importance of kind of getting the wheels back grease, getting people out confident, even though there's still this looming thought of a second wave coming. But, mm -hmm. um, but speaking of bonds, I kind of want to talk to people a little bit uh, about bonds and what they are. I mean, a lot of people, when they talk about investing in the terms equities or stocks and bonds are, are commonplace terms but not a lot of people necessarily know really what, what a bond is. So, um, so a, a bond is a form of what they call fixed income. Um, it's kind of, it works differently than a stock where with a stock you kind of participate in the gains and losses of a company. Um, so bonds are used by big companies. They can say, okay, hey, I have ABC Cake Factory. And the last couple months, you know, I've, I've gotten behind on my vendor for flour. I have an outstanding bill there. The person who supplies my sugar, the person who supplies my butter, you know, these are all expenses that I have as a company that makes cakes. So when I have debt or I need funds, what can I do outside of going to a bank and getting a loan? Well, big companies can issue what they call bonds. So that allows investors to go in and essentially buy the debt so that they can have the money and they come with a certain maturity date or length of time to where they pay interest payments and at the end of the maturity, they pay the money back. So for instance, I'll break it down uh, even better than that. So say I own the cake factory, right? And I need to get caught up on some debt so that I can start back being profitable and I say, I need to raise $10,000 and I don't want to go to a bank because I have all kinds of debt covenants and restrictions and, you know, I, before I can take on any more debt or anything else, when you take out big business loans with banks, there are a number of restrictions that come with that. So I, as a company, I say, oh, you know what, I'm going to start, I'm going to issue a bond to raise my $10,000. And so Tina comes along and she says, hey, I'll give you $5,000 of the $10,000 that you need. And then Lee, you come along and you say, I'll give you the other five. Right. And so the way that works is I'll say, okay, 
I just need this money, and in three years, I'm going to pay you guys back all of your principal. But during those three-year terms, every quarter, I'm going to pay you an interest payment of 10%. So for those three years that's going on, every quarter, I'm giving you a, a fixed payment of, of interest for you letting me borrow your money. And at the end of three years, I'm going to give you all the money, the, the principal that you put down, the 5000 you initially gave me, I'm going to give that back to you. And so that's how bonds work. And companies like corporations issue bonds, cities and municipalities, they issue bonds. They need to build a park or something. And so it's an alternative to investing just in stocks to where they can fluctuate a lot. Some people like, I don't necessarily feel comfortable taking on that kind of risk, but I have a couple thousand dollars here that is not really growing anything. So I can at least, you know, put that into an investment and get a quarterly interest payment off of it. And then at the end of the term, I'm going to get all of my money back. And so that's why uh, bonds make up a substantial part of people's portfolio. And essentially that's how they work. And, to, and bonds are kind of rated on like credit. So you can go and look at a company's credit rating to see if they're A, A plus, A, A, whatever. And that just tells you over the time that they've issued bonds, have they paid them back? Have they paid people back on time? And have they made all of their interest payments? And so it just kind of gives you some background information on, you know, kind of the risk involved with it. And it's also, you know, not as cumbersome. It's just saying, okay, I'm gonna take $5,000 and put it in the app. So, um, so essentially that's how bonds work. And something of note that I came across, um, suspected, suspected that United Airlines could be issuing you uh, upwards of maybe four or $5 billion worth of bonds. Um, they're trying to restructure some debt. So they're gonna allow people to come in and, and buy that debt, maybe and um, pay people for interest payments, you know, quarterly or semi-annually, however they pay it out over the years. So there may be a chance for investing in that. It's kind of a, um, a longer term investment, but it has a different side of risk than just kind of investing in stocks and equities. So, so would you um, recommend I go get some, air, some, air, some stock? Is that what you're saying or is that what you're not saying? Well, in accordance to our disclaimer, I am not recommending you to do anything. I'm giving you the information to say that if you would like to talk to a professional in your area who could assist you with that, now would probably be a good time to um, do a little research and talk to a professional about, about bonds. And if it's a company that you feel like you feel comfortable with, that you understand, um, and you may be doing some self-directing investment on your own, it may be something worth looking at. It's just information that um, could be good to have. Okay. Thank you. Like where I skirt the... Hey, make it make it plain. I'm gonna, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep us out the courthouse. If anything, I'm going to keep us out of the courthouse. Um, and so, yeah, um, I think it was just a couple of things. So, yeah, before I wrap up here and turn it over uh, to Miss Tina, just kind of some notable gainers and decliners um, last week over the market. ABM, um, stock symbol ABM, their facility solutions company. Uh, they're national and international. They had a, a big day last week. They were up 20%. Um, they do a lot of like facilities management stuff for, for big companies. Uh, Spotify, SPOT, uh, they had a good week last week. Uh, they even had a day where they were up 12.7%. Um, it's probably due to the effects of people listening to more podcasts and spending more time at home, kind of amplifying that. Um, another company that had a, a good week last week, they had a day where they were up 9.3%, uh, NVAX. They're a biotech company. And, um, and guess what they focus on, Tina? What? They focus on developing vaccines. So we can probably guess. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah, we can probably guess what they've been working on to kind of right. contribute to having a good week. Um, but yeah, that's NVAX. Uh, they had a good week last week, the biotech company. Um, and they, they um, had a day last week of 9.3% and they focus on um, uh, vaccines and other kind of biology and, and science solutions. Are they working um, and on I've always, for, um, what was COVID that? They're working on the COVID-19 vaccine? Yeah, they are working on some, some vaccines for, for COVID and other things and some other respiratory diseases as well. 
And so, um, just personally, me, like I always pay attention to like to um, the healthcare and and biology industries in this time. Um, there's just a lot of research to suggest that those will be the two industries to push us to the next economic expansion. Um, uh, a lot of developments in, um, in biotech and in healthcare, whether it be you know people developing software for medical professionals to work remotely or you know actual medicines themselves. Um, so there's, it just stands for a lot of opportunity in those fields. So um, those are just two, two industries that I kind of pay attention to and see what companies are doing what. Um, and last on the flip side of that, like some notable decliners we had last week, uh, VTR. VTR is a, a REIT company. They have a portfolio with a lot of senior living uh, homes and other healthcare residential areas. Um, that I think last Thursday of last week, they were down nine, nine percent. They kind of had a rough go. Um, and also, uh, another notable one was Carnival Cruise Lines. Of course, the cruise industry has been hit drastically, but something very interesting, in interesting about that. Um, Carnival started the year, they were trading, I think, at around $51, and they dropped all the way down to eight dollars at one point. A, a huge decline. And I think now they're trading around $17.80. Um, even I didn't have the best week last week. Um, but even when decliners, I'll say they have, you know, bad times or bad weeks. I mean, a lot of times when there's a decline, like there's, there could be opportunity. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there's some people that's on both sides of the fence about will, will those industries like cruises and a lot of um, like vacation type industries, like will they come back? Will they be different? So, you know, even though they're having a hard time now, there could be opportunities for, um, there just could be opportunity. Well, they could sell off to something else. So, um, I know my family personally is big, big into cruises. Um, they, so, so they, my, my, my stepmom and my sisters, like they have been devastated by the fact that they couldn't get on a boat for 10 days and eat crab legs. So, um, <laughs> there's definitely, there's, there's there's more to do on a cruise than eat crab legs, though, Al. Well, yeah, but I just <laughs> I just assume that that's what they do. But oh, okay. there's definitely a demand for it. But now, how it comes back, we, we may not know. And uh, and lastly, we're still seeing kind of a, a good uptick in trends in uh, mortgage applications. So that means that uh, more so refinances are, are still good because interest rates have been lower. So um, new construction has still not recovered quite as much, but um, it, it, existing structures and applications still been doing good on the on the mortgage front. So consumer confidence and retail spending and um, real estate and mortgage are kind of two things that we really kind of pay attention to in terms of like kind of the health of the market and how trends are going. And so um, those are just some, some jewels and notes I kind of wanted to drop on you guys. Um, and as we uh, transition into our our special guest here. I just want to um, intro her properly and um, read some of her accomplishments. So today I'm um, joining us. We have Miss Tina Adams. Tina is passionate about making home ownership a reality for everyone and firmly believes the American dream can be obtainable for anyone following her methodology. As an accredited financial counselor, Tina believes that education and accountability are critical pieces to financial freedom. Tina utilizes her expertise to develop, execute, and deliver a step-by-step -step financial plan to assist her clients as they prepare to make one of the largest and exciting purchases of a lifetime. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to turn the floor over to our special guest, Ms. Tina Adams. Thank you. It's really good to be here. Um, I'm excited about the American dream is um, so many people are wanting to buy homes, especially during this time. I've been getting a lot of calls. Like you mentioned, the interest rates are really, really good right now. So um, there are a lot of people refinancing and purchasing. Um, I have gotten some calls about um, new construction as well. I got about four calls last week for a new construction. So I was a little surprised about that, but actually got those calls. Um, 
I want to just start off by saying that, like my, um, my bio said, I believe that anyone can obtain home, on, home ownership. It's just all about getting in position, getting yourself ready for um, that, that application process. And so I teach um, credit, DTI, um, down payment, how to save for a down payment, and, and, and all those things all the time. I am the community development mortgage lender um, at Arvis Bank. So that is a, a large majority of my job goes to counseling and educating my clients. So the first thing I wanna get into is kind of like um, the process. Um, if you, there are so many people that wanna buy a home, they just don't understand, okay, well, how do I even get started? What are the things that I need to know before I start this process? So the first thing first, you're gonna to wanna to fill out an application. Um, when people wanna apply for a mortgage loan, it's pretty easy. I just send an online application so that it's just no paper. You know, you don't have to fill out a paper. You just basically go online, fill it out, and as soon as you hit submit, I'll receive it. Um, then we'll start with, um, I'll begin to look over the loan to see if we can get you a pre-qualification letter. A pre-qualification letter will basically help each client be able to tell their realtor how much they are approved for. And that's so important. Um, it's more often than not, we actually have people going out and putting the cart before the horse. They'll go out looking at, you know, $300,000 homes, you know, $400,000 homes, and then have they put going to apply for a home after that where it seems now they have kind of wasted time if they got a realtor involved they may have wasted the realtor's time because they didn't see how much they could qualify for they could if you could either qualify for less than what you thought you could qualify for or sometimes it can be more and so you definitely want to go to the mortgage lender first um, it's the first place to go so that you'll know what to tell the realtor. So the realtor is going to actually help the um, clients find the right house in the right neighborhood that's in their price range. And so one of the first things I'm going to do is see how much you can afford. Um, first thing, well, first thing I'm going to do is actually pull your credit um, to see where you are credit wise. Uh, right now, the lowest credit score that we accept is 620. And so you wanna have at least a 620 credit score. There are some places that accept lower credit scores such as 580s. Um, however, you wanna keep in mind, the higher your credit score is, the better interest rate and deal that you can get. So after the pre-qualification and you have spoke to the realtor, the realtor has found you some nice homes, you will go look at the home that you want, hopefully put in an offer and hopefully that offer is accepted. That's when the contract will come back to me. The realtor will actually write up your contract based on um, the offer, um, how uh, what the acceptance is. Sometimes the seller is gonna come back with a counter offer. You may offer one thing and they wanna counter it with something else. Whatever you guys, um, agree to will be in the contract. And so that's when we'll start, it'll go to the processing department. The processing department will begin to ask you for all the documents to verify what you told me for me to get you the pre-qualification letter. So it's good thing to keep in mind the pre-qualification letter that you get to go and find a house is not your, your approval. We actually have to go through a process of verifying um, that what you told us up front is true. Uh, whether you've been at your job for at least two years, whether you, um, whether you have the income that you say you have, and things of that sort. And so that is the processing. Uh, the processing department, they will basically ask you for those documents. And then it will move into underwriting. This is where the underwriter is basically trying to see, can you afford this loan? Are you a good credit risk? 
Are you a good investment for the bank? The bank is not in the business of, de of denying um, people. We are in the business of lending. That's how um, banks and financial institutions make their money. So definitely they're gonna wanna give you an approval, but they have to check everything out first and make sure that the bank doesn't lose money on this deal. So they're gonna be checking your bank statements. Um, they're gonna be checking your credit um, for any, um, any red flags on your credit report. Um, they're gonna be checking to see if you have any uh, months of reserves. What if something happens um, to your job? Do you have any backup, um, some money in the backup um, bank account to take over the loan? If so, just m many different things. They're gonna just check this thing out. And then if they decide, hey, this is a good loan, then it will move into the approval. It will actually be approved and moved to the closing department. The closing department will basically set up um, an appointment with your, the, whichever title company you have chose um, to close with and what date and time is good for you. And basically then you're off to the closing table, off to the closing table. And so I try to meet a lot of my clients at the closing table because that's such an important and exciting time. And I like to share that with my clients. Um, so that's basically the process. Loan application, pre-qualification, processing, underwriting, approval, and then closing. And so it's pretty easy once you know what documents we're going to ask for. Um, you definitely want to get us the documents back as soon as we ask for them. Don't wait to one or two weeks before giving us what we ask for because that's going to delay the process. So we want to get you the, to the closing table as soon as possible. Um, one thing I want to talk about is the elephant in the room, credit. So these are the things that we look at as far as your credit. We want to look at your capital, capacity, history, and collateral. So um, your capacity is basically going to be what is your current income? We need to know, okay, is your, if you have worked at this job, now that you have this income, how long have you been there? You, we don't wanna, it's, it's good to not show a history of jumping around. Um, you here two months, then you go to this place for uh, another five months, you work there and then eight months you're here. That's gonna make things look a little shaky for you. You want a consistent work history of two years. You can have worked at two different places and maybe even three different places but it doesn't need to be a gap in between. You need to have moved from one um, place of employment right into the next place, place of employment in order to make up that two year history. Also, your income does not need to have declined. If you're making income, that income needs to, it, if it has changed, it needs to show an increase, not a decline. Um, then we're going to look at your amounts owed, uh, which is your installment loans, revolving um, charge accounts, any monthly payments. So student loans, that, that, that kind of brings up a thought of student loans. If you owe um, $100,000 in student loans, $200,000 in student loans, you need to keep in mind that this is going to have an effect on your, deep, your debt to income ratio, which I will talk about that later. We, as mortgage lenders, have to take 1% of your student loan balance. So if you have several student loans, you want to add those up and know what the balance is and then um, take 1% of that. That's how much we would have to put as your monthly payment. And sometimes if that's higher than what it needs to be for you to get approved, I myself, I've gotten on the phone with student loan people um, to actually see how we can lower your payment below that 1%. If we can do that, then I can take that payment instead of the 1%. And that has saved a lot of uh, my deals in the past. Uh, okay, and that's capacity. How much basically can you afford? Uh, then we're going to look at your credit history. Um, are your bills paid on time? 
are you a late payer or slow payer have you you know is, are there some payments you hadn't made at all you want to definitely make sure your payments are always on time for all of the um loans that you've taken out or you ha currently have and so we're going to look at your uh, current liabilities your past history and sometimes we run into someone not having any credit at all and so maybe they went throughout life and they've paid um, for everything with cash or they've never applied for credit in this case we'll have to do what's called um, manual underwriting where we'll have to do non-traditional credit history so with this we can actually take utility bills uh, phone bills cable bills things of that sort that wouldn't normally be um, reported to your credit and create we can actually create a credit report with those things so if you have no credit don't fret we can actually create one for you also using rental history as well so the next most important one of the more more important things you want to look at is your debt to income ratio the reason why this is so important is because it shows us how much you can actually afford or if you can afford another loan period sometimes we've looked at um, people's credit and it shows that they're not even able to afford a loan because they're overextended if you will they're paying on so many different things and they have high payments to student loans high payments they got a high car note um, many different reasons you could be overextended but you want to keep your debt to income ratio rule of thumb around 45 percent or below 45 percent or below in some cases we can go up to uh, 50 55 percent um, some on some fha deals but the rule of thumb keep it around 45 percent and the way to arrive at that um that um ratio you want to add up your income and add up your debt total and every monthly payment how much is this all together and divide it by your income and that will give you your debt to income ratio so that's important because we've had people who have an 800 credit score um, have a perfect score um, everything seemed to check out payments even good but then they're overextended and then it has been the other way around where they have a low debt um, they have great income and now their credit score is below uh, 620 so you definitely we want to keep your credit score good payment history good and and keep an eye on your debt to income okay um, so I, uh, right here I want to just name some of the things that we don't want you to do if you're applying for a mortgage loan that could actually make the deal go south some of those things are changing your employment status you'd be surprised how many people are getting ready to go to the closing table their loan is about to be approved and all of a sudden they quit their job or got fired or um, maybe they switched employment and now they make way less than what they were making before what for whatever reason we've had people actually do these things that will actually throw off the mortgage loan we'd have to go back to the drawing board um, you change employment don't make any major purchases you again be surprised how many people are getting ready to be approved they're so excited they'll go out and buy um they'll go out and um actually apply for furniture and or either yeah but i need out, to a new house right <laughs> and we just say hey just hold on you can get as much furniture as you want every room just wait till we close just wait till we close but they'll go out get Put, put a down payment on some furniture and actually finance some furniture. Now, what has that done? And the one makes your credit score go down because you applied for something. Two, now your debt to income ratio is off. Now we have to go back and refigure this new um, loan that you now owe on each month. 
Same goes for cars, homes. You don't want to apply for anything. So I tell everybody, hey, the home is more important. You can wait on the car. Let's get the house closed first. So Tina, okay. can I ask a question? Sure. I just want, you were saying that you don't want to do these things like when you've put in, when you're about to put in for an application. Right. right. Or going okay. through the application. So if it was right. something, so say, because I was I was talking to somebody who was, you know, thinking about maybe buying a, a, a car or a house in front of Slager first. And I I would I said to them that maybe if you can do it, you don't want to do it like within that window. But I think if you do it maybe like six or seven months prior to where you've had the vehicle and show like payments and your yeah. debt to income is okay, like, but you don't want to do it within like two months or a month before you apply because it hasn't had enough time to sit there and show that your DTI is still solid. Is that what you're saying? Right. Or, okay. you know, you can actually apply for something as just as long as it doesn't lower your credit score below the amount, I mean, the our minimum credit score and it, okay. your DTI is still okay with that, with the loan on there. We will still be able to do a deal, but you definitely don't want to do it after we've already ran your credit, after we are already starting the process. So what your advice was good. It was more on a strategic um, way. It was a strategic way to build credit. So if you're going to do that, yeah, definitely do that about six months um, or so before the loan so that it'll have time to report those payments and boost your score. Yeah. Okay. Another thing we want to keep in mind, don't change bank accounts or um, or disclose or have undisclosed large deposits. So we don't want anything deposited to the account that's above $100 when you're going through the mortgage loan process. And the reason why is because we don't know where that money came from. You cannot use any borrowed funds unless it's a gift fund for your down payment, but you can't use any loans or anything um, during to, to help pay for your mortgage. So everything over $100 has to be verified. So I just tell my clients, make sure somebody give you some birthday money, they give you $1,000 for your birthday or you get some money from somewhere, just keep it. Don't put it in the bank account until we have closed. Wait a second. Because so, I, I can only imagine where Leah's about to go with this. So, so, <laughs> What's your so question, hypothetic brother? Hypothetically, let's say I'm a bartender or a barber, and I get paid cash. Mm. You're telling me, do not put that money in the bank account. Put it in the shoebox until we close on the house. That's what you're saying? Yeah, just not to over, just so that we don't complicate things. That's yeah. all I need. Okay. Just yeah. so we don't complicate That's a good things. Question. Because it could probably be verified, but you might not want to go through that process of having to verify that all this money came from tips. You would have to write out letters. We may have to get documentation from your from the bar and different things like that. And so we don't want to delay the process. Absolutely. Who, who, nobody wants to do that. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Or you just um, <laughs> yeah. So don't do that. Okay. Um, so, oh, cash apps. We've had to had we've actually had to have people verify where funds came from because everybody's using cash app right now. If someone is gonna cash app, I need to think about that. Because mm -hmm. if your cash app is tied to your bank and you just got like a five hundred dollar cash app, they're like, "What is this for?" Yeah, you would actually like, oh, have to write birthday. out a letter to explain why did you get this five hundred dollars. So, so would it be? Would it be? Would it be a better thing to just have an account? Well, I guess maybe you list all your accounts, but I guess the, the bank in which you apply for your mortgage to not even have like cash apps go to the same account that your check and all that stuff goes to. Right. In an effort to not complicate it. Yeah. Or if you just know somebody um, getting ready to cash app, you just stop them like, hey, wait, I'm, I'm in the mortgage process. Hold on. Um, just. We're gonna be turning down money, Miss Adams. We, we, we just go meet them. <laughs> go, go, go. Put your mask and gloves on and go meet them. And tell them, okay. hey, just give it to me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. 
Um, so that'll that'll delay the process from having to verify funds. Okay. Um, then another thing would be uh, don't co-sign on nothing for somebody. Even, you know, some people might think, oh, it's not mine. So it's still going to show up on your credit. Don't spend money outside um, um, that's set aside for closing. So if you show us the funds in your account, because we have to see that you have the money to close, do not take the money out and go spend. <laughs> you would think that you wouldn't have to actually say this, but right. I've had people say, um, I see the money there. Okay, we're getting ready to send it to the underwriter. All of a sudden I check back just to make sure the funds are still there and they are gone. I'm like, hey, where's the money? <laughs> What did you do with the money? Yeah. I mean, you just said I just had to verify it. Not that I, you know, couldn't spend it. I, I'm with them. I mean, I'm but probably now you don't have it. But yeah, like I was even when I worked on the retail banking side, and I would see that even for like other loans, I would to be like, what, what, what would make you think that we would notice that you we asked you to have ten thousand dollars in this account for a loan, and then when we go to close the loan, it's it's gone, and we would just be like, nobody would notice. Right. I never understood that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they be thinking I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put it right back in. But you still can't do that because now you have deposited a large uh, deposit. Now we have to go back and verify. So we it's ways around it. You have to be strategic with it. I've actually had people actually, now you need a gift letter so that we can actually verify those funds are not borrowed. But in order to be a way around that, just don't touch the funds. Yeah, so they, I had somebody tell me, oh, yeah, I had to take them out. I had some stuff I needed to do. Like, well, what, what, is that more important than the stuff you doing with us? Like, yeah. really? <laughs> but yeah. so that will actually delay the process. Um, and then don't pay off collections, charge-offs without actually discussing it with your loan officer because there could be some collections on your report that really doesn't matter to us. If it's not above a certain amount, if it's not above $2,000, a lot of times we don't even, you know, we're not gonna make you pay that off. So you could be definitely getting rid of funds that you could use towards the closing to, um, go ahead, Lee. So if I owe somebody less than $2,000, I don't got to pay them. Is that what you just said? <laughs> that could very well be the case. Well, you do have to pay them, but don't pay them. Right now. Yeah, to I ain't got to right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So well, I, I, don't That's all you need to hear, huh? I'm oh, yeah, going I, through the mortgage I, process. That's it. That'll put the oodles <laughs> in the noodles right there. That'll do it. <laughs> Using it as an excuse. No, but, no, no. Ready for closing? It's a big purchase. I'm trying to follow instructions. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Right. Yeah. So I mean, just to say, I just had a client do that. Um, they had about five thousand dollars in their account. They decided to take that some of that money instead of saving it, keeping it in there for closing, and they went and paid off collections that was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And so now they have to wait and build up some more money before we can actually, you know, move forward. See, they should have been listening. They should have been watching in the mix Mondays, and they would have known. You ain't got to pay nobody if you own less than two. Tell them they got to wait till after closing. Right. Only, only, only wait. here can you, only here can you get this can this this right. kind of jewelry only in the mix Mondays. Right, right. Credit card accounts. I mean, I had somebody go and run up their credit cards after we had already pre-approved them. Now hmm. they got a large balance on their credit cards and they brought up their, which took their DTI up. So, and don't consolidate debt. Don't do anything, basically, without my permission. Don't do anything without your loan officer's permission. We are your attorney for, we just, we look at it like we are your attorney as far as taking you to the closing table. Well, anything that you think might stop this process, you need to let us know so that we can go to bat for you we can figure out what you need to do because I want to close the loan because that's how we get paid. So I don't want to um, not know some critical information and not be able to help you before we get to the closing or get to the pro approval process. So those are just some little nuggets to keep in mind when you're um, getting ready to purchase a home.
Okay. Well, well I just got questions. Oh, oh go ahead, Al. No, 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 go, go ahead. So, I mean, you say about the money being the account. So, does it have to be my account or just an, an account? It has to be your account. Or if you're joint on a, the account with someone else, um, that's not going to be going through the loan process with you. You need to just get a letter from them verifying that you have full access to the funds in that account. Okay. So if I got a letter that say I got full access to the account, that can be my account I use for closing. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Okay. Now, <laughs> talked about the down payment let's say hypothetically which you said don't do this because you said putting the cart before the horse or horse before the cart some cart before the horse there, thank you <laughs> all the jewelry brother al thank you thank you brother al you said i'm supposed to find out how much i qualify for first then go look for a house absolutely yeah I wrote that down. so mm -hmm. just for hypothetical purposes let's say i assume I get approved for a hundred thousand dollar home, right? Mm -hmm. How much of a down payment am I supposed to expect it to have? For a hundred thousand um, dollar loan, it'll probably just roughly. I'm just gonna kind of throw an estimate out there. Just it'll probably be around three thousand, four thousand uh, okay. down payment. So rule of thumb, just keep about three to five thousand dollars aside for a down payment. Okay. And so I can do, can I do half cash and half on a card or all in the check? How, how can I pay this? Absolutely not. We're going to need it to be in your bank account. Oh, this one needs to be in the account that I got access to. This, Absolutely. This all your funds to close, which includes your close, your down payment needs to be verified in your bank account before we go to underwriting. Because we can't say, we've had this happen before too. I'm going to save it up. As I get my paychecks, I'm going to just put money aside. Yeah. Right. And that money's going to build up to where by the time we close, I'm going to have the money. Well, we can't go off of hypotheticals and, and, and you might have the money or, you know, we got to see the funds in there. Absolutely. Yeah. That's like my, my grandpa used to say, if an if was a fifth, We'd all be drunk. I know. So, I know that. Al. I, know. I can. I cannot take your will, might, maybes. Give me two weeks. We right. got to have it all right here. We you got to have the money on your person. Right. Money. We can't go. I mean, I'm sure a lot of us go to church, but we still can't base it off of faith. We we okay. got to still we got to be able to verify that it's Make right it there. Make a point. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I had a question, Miss Tina. Okay. So um, let's just say hypothetically, I'm a first time home buyer and um, I've had my money saved. I hadn't made any big purchases in the last six months. I got 5% saved because the house that I want to buy is 100,000. I saved 5% or whatever. Um, can you give me like a, and I know with every case it's different, but what is a, a reasonable timeline for somebody to expect from from the moment that I complete the application to the time that I um, close with the title company and get the keys to my house. What What's a reasonable time for people to expect to not get antsy or start calling up people? What's a reasonable timeline for them to put in their, in their mind? That's a good question. So we try to shoot for at least 30, 35 um, days after you apply. Um, we have, we have to have your disclosures out, um, within three days of having the address of the place that you are planning on getting. We have, there are certain things that just have deadlines. We, we can't, so it helps the bank not sit on your application. So, um, different things are going out. Like we only have three days for the disclosures. And then when it gets to process and they only have a few days to turn around on what they're doing. And when it gets to underwriting, they only have, you know, two weeks to do what they're doing. So that's just an example. This is why, um, the process, this helps the process go by pretty smooth. The only thing that we, that could delay this is if the client 
is not getting the, us the documents that we ask for in a timely manner. And then that may push the closing date out um, or delay it. And those documents are last two tax returns and six months pay stubs? We need two, um, two year tax returns. And sometimes we don't need the whole full tax returns. We'll just need the transcript. But we're okay. going to need two months bank statements, a copy of your driver's license, um, last two paycheck stubs. Um, so those things basically to start with, we know we're going to need. Yeah, okay. You want to keep in mind what title company you want to use. Also, you're going to need to shop around for home insurance. An unexpired ID is what they'll need, right? Unexpired. Because I used to work in banking and I was, people would literally be fuming like when I would ask them for their ID, like for some reason people would have like expired IDs, but like, oh, I could go my driver's license. And I'm like, I can't use this because it's expired. And they would like throw a conniption. Because they can't afford to, it for a new license. I don't know what the reason is, but if, if I would just make a wild guess that if you can't afford a new license, you probably at the wrong place filling out an application for something. Now I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be completely wrong, but <laughs> it's important. I want, I want people to know because this is the thing that I really experienced when I worked in retail banking. You're going to need an unexpired federally issued ID, like not a, um, a, a college ID or something else random or a driver's permit, like an actual photo government issued unexpired ID. Am I right, Ms. Tina? That's right. That's right. We can't move forward if we don't have that because we need that for verification purposes. You know who I am. I'm in here every day, man. Nobody want to hear that. That's right. We'll hey, we still got to have the same. You you'd be surprised how many people even tell me I don't have to pull their credit. I bank here. Like y'all know me. I'm good. Why you gotta pull my credit? Yeah. Well, we have to pull credit on every application because things can change. You know, so it's just certain things that we have to have on every application and that driver's license and it not being expired is one of them. Absolutely. Well, I think that was a, a plethora and a wealth of information and knowledge, very, very good information that um, people can, can use and apply. I mean, with this time right now, this is one more thing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I got to put my church finger up. Hold on. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so I did want to mention that we do have down payment assistance programs for those who find themselves in a tight spot. They still want to buy a house. They've gotten their credit score up. We do have down payment assistance programs through the city of Little Rock. Uh, right that now, mean free, right? That means y'all going to pay the down payment for it. That's what that means? Down payment assistance. That means I got a little bit and y'all got the rest. If you qualify. If you qualify. <laughs> now, I need this ID card, right? This, this government issue unexpired ID. Yes, you need to get that gov government issued unexpired ID. And then we have to know how many people are in your household and what your income is because um, you can't be making a, a great amount of income and still receive assistance. It has to be something that is needed. But we oh, do I, have for I, those who... People, I know people don't qualify for that because we all overworked and underpaid. So that's how we, we got that. That's a lot of people... Yeah, a lot of people do qualify, and some people that think they should don't. But you know, if you don't qualify, hey, it's a good thing that make you make make a good amount of money. Cool, cool, cool. cool. <laughs> was that was was that it, Miss Tina? Is it is it anything else, or does that wrap does that wrap you up? Also, just one more thing: if you do are having credit issues, I am a credit specialist. Don't um, not apply because well, don't not. Um, just tell me if you need some credit help, basically. I, I can help you with your credit. Um, it doesn't matter where your score is. I, I have been trained to help with credit. And I am done. Okay, good. And we'll also have, like, your email and contact information on some of the promo stuff so for people to, to reach you, um, to get in contact with you about the mortgage, about the credit process. So we'll definitely make sure that your contact information is, is ready and available. Um, I know there's a, a ton of people that uh, probably need your help, and we want you to help them because we know that you want to help them. So we appreciate that. We appreciate you being here with us, uh, Tina, um, for that great information. And um, so at this time, um, 
this is a, a segment of the show that um, the viewers tune in to see because they never know what to expect. They know it's going to be real <laughs> raw and rough. And um, I just, you know, cross my fingers the whole time and say a prayer for my brother because I know that his passion and his compassion for what he does is is so uh, is so visible and, and we love it and it's something that we can all use at this time. So we're gonna turn it over to my brother. Uh, have a little law talk segment. Um, we're gonna turn it over to my uh, my guy, attorney Lee Miller. What you got this story for us? All right, priest. Thank you for the introduction, brother Al. Uh, again, Miss Adams, thank you for all the jewels that you dropped on us today. Because whether people realize it or not, uh, one of the biggest purchases that you're ever going to purchase in your lifetime will be your home. And so you want to make sure that you do that process properly, have the proper guidance, uh, the right legal counsel. Um, and then also, you, you know, not to be funny, but like some prayer, some meditation or whatever you do, because it's a big purchase. And usually the terms are 30 years or more. So it's like a big long term purchase, too. It's not just like here today, gone tomorrow. You're going to be here for a while. And so it's very important um, that we get the information out to people who want the information to make, the, make them uh, better uh, educated buyers as well as, you know, to ask questions. So thank you for that. Um, we do have company today for the first time, so I'm going to keep it light um, in hopes that we, you know, we may, <laughs> may need to bring Ms. Adams back again. So we'll, we'll keep it light. Um, it's also Juneteenth, so I'm, I'm in a good mood. So we'll, we'll keep it moving. Um, one one question, I you, you can before we get out of here, just uh, I did write this down. Um, the difference between I don't know if you, did you talk about uh, FHA loans versus traditional or C word loans? I don't know. I can't remember. Conventional. Read my hand. Conventional. conventional. We'll yeah. come back. And then the, the other best one, one for a first time home buyers should they be looking at FHA or conventional? And then um, the other. Thing, oh, go, oh okay, you can't. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Come on, Ms. Adams. You are a guest. Let us know. <laughs> so it just depends on the situation. Um, if they can apply for, um, conven if they can be approved with conventional, conventional, it, it, the perks or benefit to that one is that the home um, mortgage insurance, that PMI, private mortgage insurance, will drop off after the loan has been paid down to um, pay 20% of the loan has been paid off. Whereas FHA, it will stay on the life of the loan. It may be easier to get approved for FHA if you have um, some credit, some some dings on your credit. So it just depends on the situation. Okay. And the next thing was, uh, I wanted to hear from you know your standpoint. I know politically and systematic racism why it's important, but I wanted you to explain to us why it's important to have a low interest rate or why interest rates are so important. Interest rates are very important because that's what's, um, it's the cost of doing business with the bank. So you, there's no way around the interest rate. However, your interest rate is going to basically um, re be reflected on your payment. So someone with a high credit score can get the same house as the person with a low credit score and have a much lower mortgage payment than the person with the lower credit score. And sometimes it doesn't seem fair because with the lower credit score, usually the person, maybe they ha have had more financial issues, but they usually end up paying the most over time for their loan. So it's important to get that credit score to a good place and so that interest rate can be lower. Okay. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. That's, that's, that's very important. I, I think people miss that piece, right? And so I, I thank you for that. Okay. So now let's get into Law Talk with Lee. Um, again, going to keep it light. We got a guest today, y'all, so we're going to keep it light. Um, I just want to advise you guys to be legal, be calm, be collected when you make a um, purchase. And I want you guys to get prices of comparable homes in the area to help avoid paying too much. So you should shop around for interest rates, shop around with loan officers. Um, historically, African Americans are given higher interest rates than their counterparts when they both look the same on paper so that's something to look at also i don't know how much truth this is but like federal credit unions seem to do better interest rates or something like that uh, so just research that you heard anything like that miss adams i don't want to be just making stuff up 
Do credit well, unions typically give better interest rates? Not really. I work for a bank, so no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. well, you can I don't. You can decline. Um, but yes, um, if you are a member of a credit union, they have been known to give better um, interest rates and, and their fees are typically lower than a big bank's um, fees would be. Okay. Typically because they don't have to pay stakeholders. So right. they can actually um, lower their fees and different things like that. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Number two. Um, have the property that you want to buy uh, inspected by a licensed inspector, not by the handyman that does stuff in your neighborhood or somebody that your mom and them know. You need to get a license and find an inspector to come out, look at the property, address all the issues, um, and also get a list. Don't just go with the first inspector that's given to you. Get a list because you will be basing your biggest purchase of a lifetime on this person's um research and what they think needs to be fixed in the house so don't find yourself in a position where you buy a lemon house right because you you want you don't want to buy something that's going to be problematic for you you want to be able to move you and your family in and you know put up your white picket fence etc cetera, etc cetera. um so that's that number three i want you to obtain all relevant information when shopping for a mortgage such as discuss your interest rate talk about terms cost the type of mortgage is it a fixed is it adjustable any of those type of things. Make sure you're asking questions. Um, a while back when the market crashed, it was because of subprime loans and uh, bad practices and habits of not necessarily the buyers, but the people who are selling the homes. And so you gotta make sure that what you are buying is what you're buying and not what they tell you. Read all the fine print, go over the paperwork, ask questions, seek a legal counsel, um, also, compare interest rates to people that you know in your family who bought homes. Um, I know in the African-American community, we don't like to talk about finance and putting people in our business, but if they bought a house for this amount of money and their interest rate was this, they could tell you how much the payments were on their home and they still paying on it 20 years later uh, or not. So you just want to be aware of those type of things and get you a baseline um, and some things to go by. Also, uh, I want you guys to research the lenders for rates on the same type of loan and the amount. Determine whether that interest rate is fixed or if it's adjustable, and if it's adjustable, ask your, list, your lender how you can have it adjusted to meet your needs. And also don't be afraid to shop around. Um, a lot of times, I know we see something we want it and we'll do whatever we can to get it. But in some cases you have to be prepared to walk away from the deal because you may be signing yourself up for a headache. Um, you know, again, not to, you know, not to get into it, but you know, sometimes, divine intervention or whatever it is can be trying to save you, but you, you, you're forcing the issue. Um, or somebody is selling you some, a lemon. And so don't allow yourself to be taken advantage of because you're a novice. Uh, you, people don't typically buy a lot of homes. So people have only bought one, one to three homes in their lifetime. So this is nobody is a pro at buying homes. You, you only get good at it as going through the process, asking the right questions and being as prepared as you can. Um, also, ask, is there a penalty for paying off your loan early? Believe it or not, banks make money by loaning money. So make sure that you can actually pay the loan off early and if you'll be penalized for that, because you could buy a home on Monday, hit the lottery on Wednesday, and it would cost you money to pay off your home. So make sure that you're reading those documents, looking at the fine print, getting the proper counsel. Um, and so... That's, that's pretty much like the structured part of my discussion. Um, I just want you guys to be informed. Um, part of this podcast is not only to be fun, but also like informational and educational. Um, we did get some questions from last week. Uh, I responded and email back. So don't feel free to email us questions. Um, Brother Al will give y'all our email address at the end again. But it's very important that we become a more educated, more involved um, community. Um, before I get out of here, uh, for those who don't know, we do have the direct buy protest going on. Um, Arkansas Forward, 44, Arkansas Forward, uh, for the next 44 days. Um, if you can't afford, I'm muted. I just, I think. Can no, you you're me? not muted anymore. Al is muted. Um, I can hear you. Oh. Lee. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, what I meant to say was I tried to mute myself, but you were saying that there was a start of uh, a campaign here, and I accidentally muted you. I just wanted you to start over so people heard you. Okay, at what point? At what point were you saying we're starting a new, oh, okay. as a result of the, pro the protests, we're starting a new? Okay. Um, we've also started this uh, direct buy. It's not a protest. Well, we are only shopping at Black-owned restaurants for the next 44 days. Uh, it started on Juneteenth, which is June 19th, and we're going to go for 44 days. Um, I thought it was important for us. Uh, it's adapted from Mr. Wilson. Look for his, his video on Facebook. I adapted it. I adapted his idea because I felt like we needed to spend a little quality time with one another, love on one another, and just see what our community needs and wants. Um, because we have to start spending money with one another so that we know. Um, one thing I've discovered is we don't have a taco joint, pizza place, or a lot of places open after 7 o'clock. Um, I also had to add Starbucks to my list. And so I had to go all the way to Cantrell to the Grind, which is a lovely coffee shop, black-owned, um, out there, just to get my coffee now in the morning. But it, it's all good. Uh, the Montgomery boycotts lasted over a year. So certainly I know I can get a group of people to join in with me for a direct buy for 44 days, right? Just eat at home. Um, and also uh, do some internal growth and development because we have to start circulating the dollar in our community. So the more money we spend with one another, the more money we will have in our pockets and the better quality of products that we can produce. If we're constantly having to deal with the bare minimum of funding, then that's what we're gonna have, bare minimum products um, with high overhead. So I thought it was very important to do that. Uh, for more information or anything like that, you can follow us on social media at the official Arkansas Forward, Arkansas Forward, um, ArkansasForward.com should be up on the 21st. So coming soon. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, or anything? See, I kept it light, Al. I kept it light. You did. You did. I kept it light. I kept it light. I kept it light. It was very, very informational. Yes, like, very much so. And I'm um, definitely looking forward to the, the progress. I think the stuff that people are doing at Arkansas Forward is good. I think a lot of, uh, I've been seeing just a lot of um, local um, productive and positive movements to um, really uh, engage and empower uh, black businesses and, and, and local people. Just, I just been a, a good thing, I think, for especially here at Arkansas for the state. Uh, for the country period and having like community buy-in has been important and I mean it's been good to see uh, people collaborating and working together so that's good man I, I think that's a good thing. Um, hey, I was, Go ahead, I was wondering um, if is there a list of black owned businesses around? I, that's one for restaurants I don't know if all of them okay. are there. So we, show it again we, like, yeah, so the way our website will encompass all show, show the flyer again Say something. Okay. That's nice. No, Lee, you got to talk. So the oh, camera goes. Arkansas forward. Yeah, there you go. Me plus three, direct <laughs> by. <laughs> Only in the mix Mondays you get this A plus level production. <laughs> yes, man. But no, right now we're just focusing on black owned restaurants. Um, and after that, our website, Arkansas forward, is all about moving forward. Um, I adapted from President Obama. He kind of said he wanted us to move forward. So I think that's what we need to do. So we're going to start with the restaurants and then we're going to poll people after this first 44 days and see what is the next industry that we need to focus on to help help one another out for 44 days. Right. Just imagine if we said we're only going to work with um, African-American lenders or real estate people. I don't know. Like, you know, you got to create an umbrella. Restaurants is easy. Right. I just can't say black lawyers because that's cutting out a lot of other professionals and licensed professionals. You may not have a legal issue right now but maybe licensed professional. I don't know. But we'll create an umbrella, and for 44 days, let's just concentrate right here. And also, that, that allows us to create a, data, a database on our website, Arkansas Forward, where people can um, find businesses, search, and also link with other businesses, because a lot of times, businesses don't have the funds to promote themselves, or they don't know how. Because again, um, if you're an old school chicken joint, you never had to use the internet, that type of thing. or um, you just might be really into your um, your preneur of whatever you entro, like entrepreneur. Y'all see what I did there? No, really. <laughs> um, because so you're not really into the marketing and promoting place, right? So we'll come out to you and say, hey, give us your information, fill out this Google Doc, and let's upload it for you 
just to help you because we gotta help help one another. Like, we gotta help mm -hmm. and promote one another. So coming soon though. And any input you have, Ms. Adams, please let me know. Um, because you know, like you said, you provide an excellent service. You go above and beyond calling people, keep you know, yelling at them. So <laughs> we need that sometimes. I mean, no, I'm just saying, like, we really need that. And so you we, we want to highlight people who do good quality work. Like that's another thing too. Like customer service to me is everything. So you got to be willing to do that. So, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I like that. I'm 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 in. Count me in. All right, you plus three. So you need to get three more people. You got to stay consistent with our forty-four, four, four, four. But thank you. Appreciate that. But yeah, follow us on social media. All right. There, Brother, there, I, uh, I got nothing. I just. Uh, I think you covered everything that I could think of. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that was everything uh, in regards to long talk. Okay. <laughs> hey. I have it on the chart. Hey, hey. It hey, man, me. listen. Listen, man. You and, you and this phone, man, this camera. I'm trying, like, I'm trying out a new tripod, and it's, it's connected to my I phone. thought you were trying to charge, but normally you don't charge it. It's and... on the charger, and I keep hitting the cord because, okay. listen, Look, I'm trying to work it out. So listen, for Arkansas Ford, if we know any black-owned companies that make tripods that could possibly hold Lee's camera, you know, <laughs> please inbox us and let us know. Um, no, I, got, I need a charger. I need, I need, I got, I'm going to figure it out. We're we getting it together. We're getting it together. Okay. So listen, uh, we're we setting a lot of firsts here on, on In The Mix Mondays. This is our longest show. Um, first time guest. And... We just hitting home runs all around the board. So this week's Monday minute. Um, I want to talk about the way we value time and the detriment of confusion. I'm not gonna keep. I'm not gonna keep you guys long. I'm not gonna keep you long. I'm gonna take <laughs> You're not you on be a, before them long. That's not. I'm gonna take you on a long walk on a short path. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you guys some knowledge. So listen, this is just my own little quote that like I just, just say not even like to be quotable, but I mean, it's just, if I think if there's anything that we've learned this in 2020, I don't wanna just say in the past couple of weeks, but anything we learned in 2020 is that the only currency that is invaluable is time. Time is our most precious asset. It, it cannot be replicated, duplicated, reissued. We have to safeguard our time. So in that regard, um, and as confusion relates to this, I'm gonna bring it on home. So time is your most valuable asset. Confusion jeopardizes your time because it impacts your ability to act. If you are not acting, you are not moving towards progress. In short, I think a lot of times, and this covers the complete spectrum, whether it be professional at your job and your career, you're trying to advance, personally in your relationship, how you deal with people, um, in this your civilian life, whether you're processing or if you're uh, an activist or whatever the case may be, you have to be in a space where you are working towards progress. People, right now, everybody on this Zoom has access to a phone and a computer and the Wi-Fi. Now, I'll say a caveat, that is probably, we probably share some sort, some form of privilege because maybe not everybody has access to internet and Wi-Fi or cell phone or laptop. But people in your spaces or people on social media that are arguing with you, they do. So that doesn't apply to them. That means that they have the same tools and resources to go and get the information. So when people are acting confused about anything, about most things, it is solely in an act to waste your time. If I can make you engage me 
and some mindless rhetoric about nothing or in an antithesis to what you're doing. You're starting a business and here I come with my ideas about why it won't work because of all the experience that I don't have because I'm not a business owner or about how you should be marketing to people and I've never marketed. There's a difference between constructive criticism and time wasting confusion. And some people just like to act like they don't know what's going on because they want to impede your progress. And that covers all times. People know exactly what to do in most cases, or they can figure it out. John meets Sally. John likes Sally. John knows exactly what to do to show Sally that he likes her. When John starts acting confused, it is because John is trying to impede Sally's progress or vice versa. Hey, that is true. It is true. true we, live in a, we live in the information age. People have access to information. When Lee starts talking about something regarding Arkansas Ford, and somebody jumps in the mix, no pun intended, to say why it won't work, or what about this, or I don't see why it was, that is a sole attempt to be a distraction, to waste time. Another quote that I like to say to myself, engaging in non-tangible rhetoric with non-persons of authority is fruitless. We need <laughs> to be talking to decision makers, arguing with people on social media that live in Waxahachie, Wisconsin, that have no authority, that have no resources, tools to, to help whatever progress, whatever journey you might be on. What is the point? People know exactly what to do and where to go to get information. People know what to do to get what they want when they need it. If somebody, if somebody was in a car wreck and their leg was messed up, would they sit in that confused? They'll go to the hospital. Because when it's important for you to act, you don't have to wait. You know exactly what to do. So I want us to start in all aspects of life to learn that when you let people waste your time, it is an indictment on a piece of your self-value. Because when you value yourself, once you grow into truly value yourself, you will realize that your time is your most precious commodity. You don't have to agree with me, but you're not going to waste my time. We don't have to have the same goals and, and wishes but you don't have to waste my time acting confused like you don't know what to do or what's going on. And if you don't, then stay out of the way and educate yourself to what's going on or, or to how business works or to how relationship works or whatever the case may be so that you can be a contributor. It is what they call maybe late in the day for to spend time consistently engaging in non-tangible rhetoric with persons of non-authority. It serves us no purpose. I work in sales. If I'm trying to close a deal with a man who owns a company and I'm talking to the person who's in charge of buying post-its, if that's not a decision maker, what am I wasting time talking to him for? Do I need to have a relationship with this person? Yes, can we be cordial? But I need to be spending my time with somebody who can make a decision making so that I could be going towards progress. So progress is tied into time. Confusion is the antithesis of time because it inhibits your, your ability to act. And if you're not acting, you're not going towards progress. So I just want everybody to just keep that in their mind value your time, don't let people waste your time. People acting confused about things that shouldn't even be a conversation of confusion to be about, they're doing it purposely to distract you from getting to where you ultimately wanna be. You want to surround yourselves with people who even if they don't understand, they are not wasting your time in an effort to, to, to help you. Or at least saying, well, let me see 
what I can do to get this information so that I can help them with their vision, so I can help them with their goals. So I just want everybody to take that into the next couple of weeks with them. Progress is tied to time. It's tied to your self-worth. And don't let confusion interrupt any of that because we have to be affirmed and assured about what we want, when we want it, and how we want it. And it's those affirmations that can bring progress to fruition for you. And that's it for the Monday Minute. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. A special, special thanks to our special, special guest, Ms. Tina Adams. We're going to put Woo! her on the so you guys can contact her uh, with emails or whatever like that so that you can ask her questions about uh, the mortgage process and getting your credit right in order to uh, become a homeowner. And we'll also have our information. You can contact uh, me or Lee at inthemixmondays at gmail.com. And um, any final thoughts, comments, concerns, Lee, Tina? I just want to say this has been very fun doing this with you guys um, and educating the community. This is one of the most informational slash fun podcasts I've been on. Well, thank and you. you. And you have to come back. It's not going to be like a one-time thing. Like now that you're part of the family, you're a friend of the show, you got to come back at some point. Absolutely. I would love to. Okay. Lee, any last thoughts? Nope. We're going to keep it light. We got company. Uh, thanks, everybody, <laughs> for tuning in. It's been a wonderful show. Uh, it's Juneteenth, so call and check on that side of the family that you don't talk to often. So just check on them and make sure that they're all right. That's absolutely, awesome. absolutely. Um, yeah, so until we meet again, um, cheers, and just make sure you guys stay in the mix. We'll see you next time.